Lucas, and uh, like Robert, I'm a software engineer at Ericketty Computing. And today I'll be talking about compiler tools for hybrid quantum classical algorithms. So we'll begin by explaining what hybrid algorithms are, then walk through three features that we've built to enable fast hybrid programming. And these are parametric compilation, active qubit reset, and the co-location of our quantum and classical resources. Uh, we'll then look at some timing data from our previous and current quantum computing platforms to see how using these three features, we were able to achieve up to a 30x speed up when running hybrid algorithms. So hybrid algorithms are ones in which a classical computer, or CPU, and a quantum computer, or QPU, work together to solve a problem, uh, essentially acting as co-processors. For this talk, we'll be focusing on variational hybrid algorithms, which are ones that optimize over many iterations of the same quantum program, but with different classical input parameters. Uh, the reason these algorithms are interesting is that they underlie what many people believe to be the near-term applications of quantum computing, uh, things like quantum chemistry and combinatorial optimization. So when running one of these variational hybrid algorithms on a quantum computer, each iteration step of the algorithm has five components that contribute to its overall runtime. <laughs> Uh, and these are compilation, reset, execution, optimization, and the communication between quantum and classical resources. For a typical hybrid application, we have to repeat each of these five components many, many times, hundreds or thousands of times, before we can find a solution to our problem. And uh, for this talk, we'll be focusing on tools that we've built to drive down the contributions of the compile, reset, uh, and communication components to the overall runtime. We typically express quantum programs using an instruction language which contains things like quantum gates and measurement. And, and an example of such a language is Quill, the uh, quantum instruction language we developed at Ricketty Computing. On the right, we have an example Quill program. Uh, and this program contains things like single qubit gates, like this Hadamard on qubit zero, uh, two qubit gates like this Xenon on qubit zero and one, and parameterized single qubit gates like this RZ of negative 0 0.4 on qubit one. Before something like this can be run on the QPU, uh, it must be compiled into executable binaries. Uh, and this compilation procedure is expensive, but for variational hybrid algorithms, the only things that change from run to run are gate parameters, like the ones we see here for our Z gates. Fortunately, Quill has support for declaring variables via this declare syntax here. Uh, and once declared, these labels are going to be used as input to parametric gates, effectively replacing the constants that we saw before. Uh, what this does is allow our compiler toolchain to essentially defer the assignment of these variables from compile time to when the uh, binaries themselves are executed, which we call runtime. Uh, it's additionally important to note that we only can leverage this parametric compilation feature for certain program structures. Uh, and for us, algorithms that are parameterized by RZ gates are particularly easy uh, because we can implement RZs entirely in software on our platform. So here we have pseudocode for a typical variational hybrid algorithm using standard compilation techniques. We begin by choosing our initial per oops, sorry. Uh, we begin by choosing our initial parameters for our algorithm and then enter into this optimization loop where for each step in the optimization loop, we make our program as a function of theta, compile it to a binary, and then run that binary many, many times on the QPU. And for each repetition or shot, we reset our QPU at the beginning of that shot. Uh, once we finish executing, we then collect our results and then decide if we've found a solution to our problem or not. And if not, we then choose the theta for our following round of optimization. If we instead enable parametric compilation, what this does is allow us to move the compile instruction outside of the optimization loop effectively reducing its overall contribution to the runtime to zero. Next we'll take a look at the qpu.reset command and how we can drive down its contribution to the overall runtime. So at the beginning of each quantum computation, our qubit must start in some known state. And for the purposes of this talk, that state will be the zero or the ground state. At the end of the computation, we measure our qubit and we project it into either the zero one state, 
But before we can continue with the following computation, we must return our cube to the zero state, and we typically do this uh, by allowing it to naturally relax to its ground state. Uh, unfortunately, this passive reset time is a function of qubit lifetimes, and so as these lifetimes improve, uh, this relaxation time or passive reset time becomes a dominant contributor to the total runtime of a hybrid application. So we can drive down uh, this time by implementing an active qubit reset protocol, and this allows us to quickly set all of our qubits to the ground state at, at the end of a computation. Our circuit starts out the same way, but after measuring, rather than waiting to relax, we either apply an X-pulse or not, uh, dependent on the classified measurement result of our qubit. What this does is give us an order of magnitude improvement over passive reset time, uh, and we additionally get the, the benefit that it is independent of qubit lifetime. Also, for more details on the hardware behind active qubit reset, please check out Glenn Jones's talk on Thursday at 4.30. Finally, we'll take a look at the communication time between our quantum and classical resources and how we can drive down that component. So, in web API models of quantum computing, for each iteration step of a variational hybrid algorithm, we have to send our quantum program over the internet, receive our results back over the internet, and perform our optimization component on some local compute. If we instead use a cloud computing model for quantum computing, we can co-locate our quantum and classical resources, and what this does is allow us to iterate much more rapidly uh, in these hybrid problems. So finally, we'll take a look at some timing data from our previous and current platform to see how we, we achieve this 30x speed up. So here we have data from our previous platform, the Forest Web API. And in this log log plot, uh, we have 851,000 jobs run on that platform across the top 10 numbers of shops that were run on that platform. We can then collapse each number of shops blob into its respective median, and then using the average statistics of all the jobs run on that platform, we then came up with a representative quill program to run on our current platform, Quantum Cloud Services, or QCS. We have the results from those executions here, but without parametric compilation or active qubit reset enabled. And what we can see is that just by co-locating our quantum and classical resources, uh, we already see a three to five X speed up uh, over our previous platform. If we then enable parametric compilation, we get an additional five to six X speed up, but only for small numbers of shots. As we go to higher numbers of shots, uh, the constant performance improvement we get from parametric compilation uh, is dwarfed by the relaxation time of our qubits. But if we enable active qubit reset, we then get that five to six X speed up back independent of the number of shots. And what this does is give us an overall 19 to 30 X speed up over our previous platform and a maximum shot rate of up to 51 kilohertz. So in conclusion, just by co-locating our classical and quantum resources, we already get a three to five X speed up over web API models of quantum computing. If we then enable parametric compilation and active qubit reset, we get an additional five to six X speed up when running these variational hybrid algorithms. And these three features and the overall 19 to 30 X speed up that we get from them are available today in quantum cloud services, which is currently in public beta. Uh, you can sign up for it here. Uh, and also, all of the data and all the data analysis from this talk are available on GitHub at the short link here. So, thank you very much. <laughs>